it's kind of hard for me to take like a genuine like just kind of somber thumbnail that doesn't look like I'm trying to be uh, like jokingly there's that bird again uh, just saw One Life uh, the new Anthony Hopkins film about uh, Nicholas Winton uh, the trailers tease it and you may have seen uh, it a couple years ago <clears throat> it was I don't know if it went viral on social media but it was one of those <clears throat> somebody rediscovered a bit of history and shared it and it had like captions or whatever on it about uh, Nicholas Winton who uh, right before World War II um, helped rescue 669 refugee refugee uh, children mostly Jewish children uh, who were in Czechoslovakia Prague um, and helped rescue them and move them and get them with foster families in the UK right before World War II broke out and, and Hitler invaded um, and spoiler alert for this is in the movie it's in the trailer ish but also this is just a historical thing uh later on in the 1980s uh the bbc did a show where they featured him on and um sport I, yeah, i'm just gonna give it away uh they surprised him where like the majority of everybody else that's in the audience with him are the children that he rescued um so anyway this movie Shows it's it's Anthony Hopkins as, as older Nicholas Winton, uh, and then I already forget his name Johnny Flynn I believe uh, as the younger uh, Nicholas Winton um, to jumps between the actual time period of him rescuing them and then later on in life him kind of uh, having to seek I guess closure on it. Um, there's a moment in the movie where somebody says like Don't start this if you can't see it through if you can't finish it. Uh, and so it's him later on in life. He says he doesn't ever really think about the children or like what happened to them uh, after they were rescued. Um, but he clearly does. He, he's got boxes upon boxes of just memories because he can't let go. He's got this yearning. You could frame it as he was a bit selfish and wanted admiration for it. There's, there's talks of He's got this uh, scrapbook, and he was like, well, I don't want it to be on a shelf. I want somebody to, like, know about this thing or whatever. And you could see that as, like, he wants, he wants somebody to, like, acknowledge the work he did, and he wants credit and maybe a bit of fame for it. But you could also see it as just, like, they frame it against this is in 87 where there was more refugee crisis going on and it's relevant to today and the approach people take to refugees today uh you could frame it as like you know this is just an important thing to show that like there is humanity and there is good people and it's a reminder to like you know think of others anyway um i don't know if the yeah, i don't know if the older stuff with uh anthony hopkins is necessarily super effective it's interesting to see the stuff the younger uh, Nicholas Winton stuff where it's actually him coordinating the effort to get them uh, moved out there's some there's some glossing over of of facts or I'm, I'm not an expert on the matter but just in this in the story in the plot they're telling here there's kind of some glossing over one moment they'll be like how are we gonna come up with the money and then it's just kind of glossed over that like, I guess they came up with the money somehow uh, I mean there's a brief montage of like they did they rose funds it, it they show like hey they worked really hard to raise funds to get the first 20 kids out and then later on they're just like and then we got like 100 more and 150 more it's like how did you get the money for that they just kind of gloss over that stuff and once once it gets going they're just like they got more and more and more and more um obviously there's going to be like parallels with this movie and something like like a schindler's list which it also has to do with one man trying to save jews during world war ii um and so there's that same Attempt. I don't know if it's as effective. Maybe it's just because Spielberg was really good at doing that with in Schindler's List of showing um, one man's like determination, but also like 
grief, there is an attempt at the same kind of emotional beat. I just rewatched this scene because for some reason it popped up on my YouTube recommendation today um, of the ending scene uh, of Schindler's List where he's surrounded by thousands of people or hundreds of people. I think it was like 1,100 people uh, that he saved and yet he, he thinks it's still not enough. He, he still wishes he could have gotten one more or you know just just one more person um there is an attempt in this movie to establish that same kind of emotional feeling uh there, i mean there is a one of the things this is a bit of a spoiler but uh some there was one final train of children that was going to be evacuated that at the very last minute minute didn't happen and you get a sense of him feeling the guilt for that unfortunately the editing on that scene kind of is a letdown because it's the only moment where we have like a voiceover and I it, it kind of narratively it doesn't play out as well I don't I guess I expected this movie to like be more sappy than it is even the moment where you have the interview with the BBC it's played out so plainly it's not dolled up for Hollywood and so it wasn't as like shocking even for you know obviously i knew it was coming but it was it was not as it wasn't i i expected this movie to be sappier and and more heartfelt and, and like more heartbreaking and and tugging at the heartstrings i guess i appreciate the movie for maybe not attempting to manipulate my emotions as much as it could have or maybe it was trying that and was just ineffective in its approach. Like I said, I think it's a bit jarring sometimes, the cutting back. I don't know if we necessarily get the uh, emotional arc for Anthony Hopkins' older Nicholas Winton aspect. I don't think it's as effective to, to showing casing that like this is a closure for him until the very end where it, it's very obvious. It's like, oh, okay, he everything's better now because he's reconnected with the kids like you get it but it just it didn't feel as fleshed out as it could have been um so yeah i i, I don't know if the i don't know if that's something to let down in the editing certainly the acting's you know decent quality um good like really good acting um you know you, it's, they're not get bad performances i just think it's a little bit of a letdown in I don't know if it's the pacing or necessarily the editing. I don't know if this, there's been other movies that have effectively done this kind of like swapping back and forth between like new and old, like older, two different time periods in the same person's life and kind of reflective type stuff. It, it just, I don't know if it, I don't know if it was effective in telling the narrative and kind of having that through line of the, the emotional through line of like, this is something he's undertaking and then now finally it's closure. Um, and I don't know if that's maybe because they were like focused more on just kind of telling it as it actually happened rather than trying to doll it up for Hollywood. But I don't know. It just wasn't as emotional as I expected it to be. It was still good and still an interesting watch. Um, it just wasn't to the level that I was prepared to be emotionally manipulated, which is an odd thing to say so uh i'll say a solid seven but i was expecting this to be like an eight and above um but yeah so seven out of ten i would say for one life uh anthony hopkins is surprisingly good at playing a religious german guy or a german guy with religious ties because in this movie he's ancestrally German and ancestrally Jewish. He played uh, the Jewish Pope in the movie Two Popes. Uh, he recently played Jewish Sigmund Freud. He was also a Jewish guy now living in Britain who was happening at the exact same moment that this, that this is happening in time because that was also set at, at like right before the war and the invasion. Uh, it's just an interesting observation that Anthony Hopkins is good at playing German people with a British accent, I guess. Uh, but yeah, seven out of ten for One Life. Not as not as elevated as I was expecting it to be, which is a bit of a bummer, but informative and interesting nonetheless. Seven out of ten for One Life. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. 
You guys stay classy. Peace out.